as document 16 in appendix 3. Let me now go to specific responses in the allegations of our accusers. One, the petitioners had argued that two of the suspects are arrested by the police in the course of investigation were in police custody when Comrade Olaito Yerinde was murdered. This is not true. Suspects Danju Mamusa and Murita Lausman were arrested on the 24th of May 2012 and not 24th of April 2012. 24th of May 2012 and not 24th of April 2012. They were arrested by good Nigerians on the 24th of May and handed over to the DPO Uber Market Police Station, who in turn handed them over to the Special Anti-Robbery Squad Edo State on the same day for an offense of unlawful possession of cartridges. The federal detectives took them over on the 27th of June 2012. These suspects made statements and their statements are contained in the duplicate case file with the DPP. And these statements contain the date of the arrest. It is curious that the DPP did not read their statement. Their statement said when they were arrested, 24th of May. Which DPP now? The Edo DPP. He has it. <laughs> Their statement is contained in page 5A, page B, page B5A, page B6D, and page B6F. The eyewitnesses that arrested them to the police station made statement in the same case file. And they stated the date of arrest as 24th of May 2012. Their statements are contained in page A14 and page A15. Which of the volumes now? No, the, in page 7, paragraph 3.9. Page 23, paragraph 3.10.9x. Page 24, paragraph 3.10.9, XXV. Page 41, page 45, and page 85. These pages contain the dates of arrest as 24th of May 2012. On page 78, on page 78, there was a printer's error, excuse me, that put in 24th of April 2012. We have searched throughout the case file. We have searched throughout the police investigation report. We have not seen any other place this meaning was conveyed or this date was misstated. One begins to wonder whether the vetting of this case file is not couched in mischief. If all the statements of the suspects contain their date of arrest, the witnesses who saw when they were arrested contain the date of the arrest. The case file from Uber Market Police Station contain the date of the arrest. Mr. Chairman, I posit that this matter is a serious matter. It will amount to chasing shadow. For this page 78 to become the issue why this investigation has been said to be shoddy. Why this investigation has been said to have been bungled. Mr. Chairman. You know, this, the, you know the standard of proof in uh, criminal uh, proceedings? Yes, sir. 
It's, it's, it's beyond reasonable doubt. Yes. Yes. Including the advice that yes. contains yes. There is any, any, the court and where there is any iota of doubt, what happens to the accused? He's entitled to acquittal. That is why that is why extreme diligence uh, is required. So what I'm saying is that yes, it might be an error. It might be an error. But for your worry is that the man who is supposed to prosecute is the one observing it. If he doesn't observe it in his office, others will observe it for him in the court. If he observes it, Mr. Chairman, if he observes it, he shouldn't tell me on the pages of newspaper. He shouldn't tell me. We are supposed to be working together. Hmm? Uh, yes, sir. The, po the, po the petitioners also posited that the gun used for the murder of Comrade Olaito Yerinde was earlier used for armed robbery and recovered by the police. And that by police record, this gun was already in police custody when the murder took place. Again, this is simplistic and misleading. The four suspects who robbed and murdered Comrade Olaito, namely Danjuma Musa, <coughs> Murita Lausman, Aota Umaru, and Moses Asamokoro used three guns for the operation and took away one double barrel gun from the deceased residence. After they have been arrested, after they have been arrested through the sequence, we are now trying to do a mop up operation. Where are your guns? Which guns do you use for the operation? Danju Musa said, I custody one gun for the group. It is a locally made uh, single barrel uh, pistol. This gun I used to keep in a dustbin. That, that is a dustbin where he stays. And that one of these days, the children of the landlady went playing and stumbled onto the gun. And the landlady called the police and the gun was taken to a Sigye police station. Can you take us to your landlady? He took us to the landlady. The landlady saw him and said, Ah, Danju Musa, can they see you? Now you be this. This man is not my tenant. But the person I gave a house, who is my tenant? is squatting him. Ever since this gun was found out, Danju Musa has not come to this house. Madam, what happened to the gun? There is a police corporal, John Abugu, who lives near my house. I called him to take this gun to the police station. And he recovered the gun to a Sigye police station. Mr. Chairman, please address us. We moved to a Sigia police station. A Sigia police station, this is what we have been told. Do you have this gun? Initially, they didn't know, you know, they didn't know about the gun. Now, no, let us understand that point. <laughs> yes, initially, the DPO of a Sigia police station said he was on casual leave and that he needed to find out. The DPO now found out and retrieved the gun and brought to the investigation team. We said, support it with documents. The DPO now gave us an extract. This extract contains 24th of April as the date this gun was retrieved in the station. Excuse me. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. 
Mr. Chairman, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes. Chairman, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Chairman, sir. Yeah, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Hold on. Did you look into the records? The DPO, yeah, you because, know, because we, you said when you got no, there, yes. you didn't really know. So nobody, you just sat like that. Nobody, nobody had any, nobody had idea of date or whatever. Nobody had. This is the story. We are reconstructing a story. We. Go, we are reconstructing a story and we got to the station and the DPO said when this Corporal Abugu was in the station, I was on casual leave give me time to find out he found out and retrieved the gun and brought the gun to the investigators now, having brought the gun to the investigators how did this gun come to your station? This gun wouldn't have flown to your station. And the DPO now said, let me go for the extract. He went and got an extract, and the extract bore 24th of April, 2012. Now, the issue here is, the armed robbers who raided the light house house went in three guns. By their own account, by the account of Danjuma Musa, we traced this gun to a Sigir police station and recovered it. The petitioners did not put this extract in the case file. We put it. The duty of an investigator is to bring all facets of the matter to the fore. It is not our duty to falsify the date. It is not our duty whether it is favoring prosecution or not, you bring it to the fore to enable the man at the next stage of the criminal justice system to look at the ramifications and decide. Let me also say, let me also say that the extract in itself has in itself has a lot of inconsistencies. It's questionable. You see, you see, you see, that, that is the problem. Eh? The, pro the body you have now, the problem you have now, as it affects the problem you have now, as as it affects this gun issue, is that you are under the labor of trying to give the police protection. Because the story of this aspect of the gun is not straight. The story of the coming in first and the police not really knowing about it, the strange gun in the station, the DPO didn't know because he was on leave. And when you come ask him for it, he wouldn't let you know that he didn't know because what you do is to call the appropriate officers and get the information. But before he did that, he already knew that he didn't know about it. You understand? Yes. And the coincidence of 24th of, um, of April, you know the two dates that uh, are in issue here are all on 24th of April. Both the other arrest of the suspects of the su and the gun on the same date. And they are in different situations and scenarios. So you can enlighten us on that. Now Mr. Chairman, my lord, before the witness goes further, want the document to interpret this, the extract. Yeah. He has said the extra ball 24th of April. Yes. He can't go further and now be talking of inconsistency in the extra. That is for your interpretation, sir. Mr. Chairman, you have Mr. already Chairman, sir, Can I be permitted to say a word or two? Contrary to that position, you deserve and you are entitled, and the entire country needs information, needs an elucidation from this side of the divide. So that is why we are here to give you our own side of it. Because the documents alone may be unmeaningful at a point when you, are, when, when you retire to look at every issue before you. If um, to all parties to understand what happened. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that is our focus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, I believe that uh, we are almost rounding up. Yes, um, I'm rounding up, Mr. Chairman. Now, Mr. Chairman, you would have noticed 
that even the timing in the extract is wrong. Even the the timing in the extract is wrong. The the timing of when the entry was made is 0626 hours. When the timing for when the policeman was supposed to have brought the gun is 0630 hours. That means the entry has been made before, before the, the gun was brought in. Totally. Totally. Totally, Mr. Chairman. The body of the entry, the body of the entry says that the gun was recovered when the policeman was coming back from morning duty behind a vehicle. Why the reconstruction from the suspect, the landlady, and Danju Mamusa pointed to the fact that children were playing with this gun when it was recovered? That's another inconsistency. Now, now, who is manipulating those facts? Now, we are investigators. We are investigating. We are investigating. Do you, have, do you have any difficulty in knowing that if these facts are manipulated, that they are manipulated by the police in that station? It's, it's, it's already been handled. Uh, it's, 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 unless we begin to tell ourselves. It is already been handled. It is, it is, it is, it is already been handled. Because the issue here. Mr. Chairman, the issue here is why should I believe Danjuma Musa and not believe the extract? That is the issue. Why should I believe Danjuma Musa and the suspects in the stories they told me about the gun and not believing what the extract has said? And I am saying that the extract in itself has manifest inconsistency and that the corporal who was on foreign mission in East Timor has returned. That couple has returned and in his statement, he said he was on off duty on the day this thing happened, that he was not returning from any duty. So, it is possible and very possible that the police in the Exigia police station apparently had no record. And by the time the, you the, came. By the time the investigators came, there was an attempt to create a record. You're right. We are investigators and we must we must keep open. We must remain open. You cannot only talk when it favors you or when it does not favor you. So and you know that it is those type of guns that come in off record that are used for certain operations. But it's true. If 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 police officers without responsible officers know it, Mr. Chairman, that's not part of the issue. Where the Mr. Chairman, that's, that's a different issue. Yes, just continue. What I am saying is that how this is uh, what has happened in a Sigia police station is not the creation of the investigators. Okay, we are exposing. It. Okay, it is the investigators that are exposing it. And 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 you see, we put in the record. We are not we are not under any force of arm to put the record, but for transparency and integrity. Mr. Chairman. Mr. 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 Chairman, let me also say that we have noted the allegations of the petitioners that one of their members was arrested on a singular and unconfirmed statement of a suspect. We wish to confirm that Garuba Usman and Maisamari made that statement. And he stated so before Reverend David Ugolo and his confession is on tape. We also wish to state that he was positively identified by the suspect after he has changed his position from four to nine. We also wish to say that the DPP has said, do more investigation. A case of armed robbery and murder is heinous. By my practice, police practice, 
the investigation continues for a period of seven years before it can be downgraded but the file is not closed so the rest assured that this investigation is ongoing um, in conclusion in conclusion mr chairman we wish to state that the unfortunate incident of fortnight 2012 which resulted in the death of comrade olaito here in the received an unprecedented attention from the inspector general of police who is satisfied that the dig and his investigators discharge their responsibilities diligently and with an utmost sense of integrity the investigation team described quality leadership and gave the assignment their best shots if the petitioners believe strongly like they have said quote that there are elements pulling weight over the real killers of for light or here in their select they should name them without further delay since the petitioners believe that the real killers of for uh, here in day have not been arrested they should name them because he who asserts proofs in the wake of this avoidable controversy the police as an organization has been disparaged has senior officers maligned humiliated and embarrassed for carrying out a statutory assignment this case is not about the police this case is not about civil society this case is not about the arrest of david ogolo this case is about ensuring that the killers of comrade olaito here in the are brought to justice the criminal justice system requires robust synergy from all stakeholders and all hands must be on deck to ensure that justice is done for everybody in the conduct of this investigation the police has carried the complainants along at every stage that is mrs soyerinde and adeinka oletubo it is therefore very surprising that the restlessness associated with this matter is coming from quarters other than the persons who reported this matter who is crying more than the bereaved the scope of this investigation so far was extensive the conduct required diligence and commitment the approach needed integrity the analysis documentation required painstaking humility and dedication the investigating team displayed these qualities we must learn in this country to appreciate what we have that is our own Amen. and continuously encourage them we did not need to be called criminals we did not need to be dismissed for doing a job that both the Edo state dpp and the federal dpp have already said has tremendous merit the Edo state dpp has issued advice in this matter where he said out of the 10 suspects six there, are, there, there is a prima facie case against six and two he talked about their date of arrest if the date of arrest is known to be 25th may and not 25th i mean the 24th may and not 24th april that means we have prima facie case against eight people two we need corroborative evidence we are not instigators we are investigators the federal dpp has given advice that about either 10 or 11 including secondary receivers should be charged we wish to point out that the security agencies in the country are doing a commendable job towards crime reduction and you, are you praising yourself yes, sir. you should allow us to say that i'm going somewhere sir the department of state services by the arrest of seven suspects contributed immeasurably in the fight against crime and criminality these suspects are by their confessions and follow-up investigations carried out by the police habitual criminals who have terrorized benin city metropolis police investigation has been able to link them to specific acts of criminality with the locations and victims positively identified we are satisfied that the evidence disclosed by our investigation will sustain the charges for which they have been arraigned finally mr chairman we have by our transparency compromised the identity of our witnesses victims and investigators 
and other characters in this investigation, including classified documents. This is in realization of the fact that parliament all over the world hold the key to quality oversight that reveals truth and make truth sacred. It is our plea, Mr. Chairman, that these victims, witnesses, and investigators be protected within the privileges inherent in your powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. For, for the... I know the sergeant at arms is here. That's our own police, and uh, he has the power to arrest anybody, unless the person is clothed with uh, constitutional immunity. Including me, including me, NASA. <laughs> um, honourable colleagues, we have given all the parties here opportunity to present their positions. We will now, as we agreed in our procedure, the pictures, honestly to me, are becoming clearer. I may not, we may not be as confused as the Office of the Attorney General, <laughs> because we can understand what both sides did. If you ask me, very wonderful job, both by the police and the SSS. It's just to 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 uh, to harmonise those two, if you ask me. But at the close of hearing, the committee will sit back and look at all the facts. Now, yes, you are free. You are free. So, um, honourable colleagues, yeah. any member who has any question? Yeah. Can I, can I just no, sir. Sorry, sorry. No statement, sir. Sorry. Anybody who has any question? No, we are not coming to you yet. If if you have a question to any of them, to any of them, I recognize you, sir, and you ask the question. Then we also allow the parties to ask questions. If the questions are so much and so many that we cannot finish today, well, we can join today to tomorrow. That's no problem. So, Honourable Chris. Uh, Mr. Chairman, actually, having listened to the submissions by all the parties here, I believe, like you just rightly said, that the truth or the, or the culprits are within custody, which is actually a commendable act in itself. However, who of these culprits actually committed the crime is where the challenge now lies. And I believe that for us to unravel those challenges, I wish to find out for the play that two cardinal areas we need to focus on majorly. One, the forensic on the gun and the bullet that killed uh, Olaito. I believe that if they, uh, the police, because the police here are saying that it was uh, a locally made gun. The SSS says uh, gave uh, about three kinds of gun, which was a short, one was a shotgun. So I believe that if we can do a forensic on the body of uh, Olaito, this can unravel this little problem. At the same time, the police now connecting David Egolo into this matter. Police report here, uh, from the analysis here, the police had done. They have not given us their report on the analysis of the phone log collected from the various providers. I believe that once the police can do that, this now will not collaborate their position that yes, David Egolo was one of those persons or was the architect of this crime or he will be set free. So, on, for me, I believe that these two things will give us a clear way on where we are on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chris. Um, that um, I'm very enriched today by what has taken place here. And I think that this golden opportunity that both the SS and the police are having, obviously for the first time since the commencement of investigation, is very important for us to be able to clear one or two areas. I want to ask, was there a transmission of a file, case file, from the Department of State Security Services?
together with the suspects, suspects um, from the DSS to the police. The reason I'm asking this question is that when the director of SS spoke, he did not uh, make any allegations as to whether what the police did was right or wrong. But the police copiously referred to the fact that they got the suspect, but they never got case file. I need a clarification on that since the two of them are here. Thank you. Okay. Not just hold on. Question is flowing from the very brilliant conclusion that the police spokesman made. And it has to do with his claim that for us to be safe in this country, there should be synergy between the SSS, all the uh, law enforcement agencies. I want to ask, because going through all that was given to us now, not once did I hear we now move to the SSS, moved to find out, to do this, to do that, except one isolated case of reference to a letter which was claimed not to have been replied. Is he satisfied by the synergy that he generated in the course of this investigation? Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my question is very direct. I want to know from the police, outside the three guns handed over to you by the SSS, how many guns did you recover from those suspects you, you arrested, the ones you investigated? How many guns outside the three guns handed to you by the SSS? DCP Ezekiel, in his solution, said that uh, Olaito's BB or his telephone was identified by the wife and the brother-in-law. I would like to know if there is any material evidence to that effect. So can I get a question again? That was his request, and that was why I uh, listed her and the brother-in-law. You know, it is possible that the investigation is done there's a, a camera okay, okay, like that. okay, 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 noted. Thank you. Uh, no. My question is to DCP. Um, I, I, I just wish you could explain the independent department that conducted the identification of uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, David Ogolo, who was identified by Garba Masimari. That department is related to the police or the state or even the federal. Your Excellency, I think one very fundamental issue that will assist the work of this committee is in the area of the inconsistencies arising from uh, the activities at SEG police station according to uh, the DCP, SDK. The dates, in my opinion, and in my view, the way that I speak those dates and inconsistencies, you may need to do some more work. All those who were connected with those activities uh, in respect of documentation, police extracts, and everybody that is co connected with that, it is very, very fundamental, the date, the 24th of April. Thank you. My question is for the SSS. Maybe I'll just share one more question amongst them. The three guns or those guns that uh, were um, reported, uh, you know, got from uh, the criminals, did they correspond with the autopsy report? The autopsy report. That's one question. Then for the my dear friend uh, DCP, he did say that uh, the gun was found in the dustbin when the children were playing. Assuming that uh, even as an honourable, and a gun was found with me, and the woman waited for the. For the police that lives in the, that's a compound there, 
take this gun to the police station. The, the innocent policeman went there and reported the, the gun. And then it was later uh, reported there. One would have wondered the way I know police operate. Because uh, even, even as a retired uh, group captain and the position I've held, a gun was found with me by the police in Lagos. I slept overnight there, though I was not in the cell. My question is, that was that person that was, was at large and eventually found, because the woman expressed some uh, amazement. She said, ah, where have you been? Was he arrested? It's a very fundamental. Then, the um, Danjuma Musa. No, 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 listen to me, please. When was, when was he in custody? Was he arrested when that gun that, the, you know, that, that was reported in the uh, SK police station? Was he arrested immediately? No, don't no, 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 you, 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 you do that later. Say that I'm listening attentively to the deputy commissioner, particularly when he was giving analysis on how the people were arrested. And in listening to him, I was also a little bit uh, as confused as the office of the attorney general because the people that were directly involved and arrested, you could see one in Adamawa, one in Kano, one in Gobe, all over the country. The question that may follow from there is these various people that were arrested for the purpose of this murder, did you go a further step as to know where they converge to conceive this idea of murdering or really day for the purpose of robbery and the rest of them? At six. That's why I said this man was arrested on the 31st of May. It was after we presented the other people that they now transported him from Kano to us. Then we added him to him. Okay. Then he said something about guns and autopsy. By the time we recovered this gun on the 2016 of June, Olaito was already buried. I think so. He was buried. So if he said we want to do autopsy. Okay. And then the identification. It's okay. Identification. Is 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 okay. Oh, we, we, we actually we actually. Every, can go. Let me come, sir. Every step we took. Every step, every person we arrested, I bri my director briefed the governor and I was briefing the president. Every step, every person arrested, every person. This one has been arrested, this one has taken us to this, this one has taken us to this, this one has taken us to this. It's, 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 the investigation now is scientific. It's, you don't have to go all those problems. It's scientific. <laughs> And that to you, it is how you utilize your money. It's okay, sir.